Hello, my name is Mark Sanderson, and I'm going to tell you about the Perspectives paper, Where Do Queries Come From? It's written by a wide range of researchers, um, most of whom are at RMIT University, but also Ryan White is based at Microsoft Research. The uh, topic of this work is on the importance of thinking about the different ways that people create queries when they submit a query to a search engine and the incredible variety that people seem to be displaying when uh, trying to search for a particular topic. To um, illustrate what I mean, here's my colleague Dana with a video that she made just the other day. My friends and I have been having an argument about the number of legs on a chicken. They say four, I say two. Let's check it out. How oh. many legs? does a chicken have? Google says four, that's weird. I think that's just wrong. Chicken legs, how many? Well, this first result says a chicken has two legs. Why do I get different results when I type in different things? That's a great question, Dana. The answer simply seems to be the way you word your query impacts the results that you get. I mean, in many ways, it's kind of not that surprising. The words you use impacts on the documents that you get, but it's something that we as a community haven't studied in very much detail. If you take a look at our paper, right at the start, we've got a couple of sets of results, one run on a web search engine, one run on offline collection, that illustrates that this isn't just a one-off as was shown in Dana's video, but it's a systemic problem. The way that we word our queries impacts profoundly on the results that we get. Um, uh, for example, if you take a look at this paper here, which was published in TOEIS, the Topic Difficulty Collection and Query Formulation Effects paper, it does a very interesting ANOVA analysis comparing the impact of topics, the way that queries are formulated, and the impact of different system algorithms. The numbers in that blue column indicate the relative importance of, of these different factors. And what you see is that the way we formulate our query is almost as important as the kinds of topics that we search on a system. The algorithms, the systems that we use, barely impact on the effectiveness of the systems that we, on the ultimate results that we see. Query variation, query formulation is a critically important aspect. Do people generate lots of different queries? Well, in the UQV collection, a collection where uh, about 100 crowdsource workers were shown Trek topics and asked what query they would use to satisfy the information need in each of those topics, it was found that there was profound variation across crowdsource workers when they were asked to think of a way of querying. Even for something as mundane as a query for the recipe for beef stroganoff, which is what this picture is, it was found that people varied their queries. I think for the beef stroganoff uh, topic, about 15 different queries were issued by 100 crowdsource workers. So even for something as mundane as finding a recipe for some food, there is incredible variation. So I hope that I've shown you on this slide that query variation matters, it impacts on results, it's been measured to impact on results, and variation is very extensive. So what do you think about that, Damiano? But what do we already know about that? What do we already know? Well, we know that a user comes to a search engine with a query, some sort of normalization happens, query order completion, reformulation, documents are searched, those documents are fed back to a search result page, and that page is fed back to the user. We also know that when uh, a person creates a query, there are processes that go on to influence the way that query is worded person has some sort of information need, a query comes out, but something happens that causes them to word the query in a particular way. It could be that the information they encountered that caused the information need, say they read a book, a newspaper article, a posting on social media, might cause them to want to search something. Um, and the nature of that information might cause, might impact on the way that they issue their query. The person might have some cognitive biases and those biases might influence the query. The person might have a particular fixed view about how search engines should work uh, to them with a hammer, to someone with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And to someone with a particular searching strategy, a query should always be formulated in a particular way. 
And we're very interested in understanding this concept of functional fixedness. Do people get stuck in the way that they search? A person might also encounter misinformation or disinformation. That's what this icon is supposed to represent. And that misinformation could then cause someone to search for more misinformation. All of these things have been studied to a certain extent by the library and information seeking communities. We would argue that a lot of the uh, approaches that those communities have used have been largely based on artificial queries. And we think it would be really interesting to extend that work into a wider range of more realistic situations. What's the gap? Well, the gap is in understanding what goes on between that information encounter, the person getting an information need thanks to that encounter and the query that they generate. And we think it would be fascinating. And we wrote this perspectives paper to encourage you to think about tackling what we believe is the need for a holistic understanding of the way that uh, uh, people, when they have an information encounter, leads to them issuing a particular kind of query. We believe that this is something where we need to study both the information encounter, the cognitive biases of the person, their background, their cultural backgrounds. If they are encountering misinformation and somebody creates a piece of information that actually tries to deliberately cause someone to query for something in a particular way, and there is indeed some evidence that that is happening, um, we think those are things that should be studied. And if people have a particular functional fixedness in the way that they search, it would be fascinating to understand what causes them to search that way and whether there are ways that we can encourage them to search uh, differently. So I've mentioned the idea of studying humans uh, as they search and understanding all the different ways that uh, their backgrounds and behaviors might influence the way they search. We also are here at SIGIR, a conference that is passionate about evaluation, and we feel very strongly that evaluation needs to be upgraded. I have a slide here from Trek, from I think Trek 9 from, where are we, probably 20 years ago. And this is just an example of what a Trek topic looks like. It's a topic with a particular information need, finding out about a particular kind of cat, and what's striking about this is there's only one wording of that query. There's a title description and narrative, but basically it's the same wording, it's the same person who generated that text. And the evidence from um, these few existing papers, the ones that generated the UQV collection and the, um, uh, the, the ANOVA analysis of testing, is pointing to the critical importance of creating test collections with multiple queries. At the moment, we have very few test collections that provide that, um, that key piece of testing information, and we think this is something that needs to change. How do we fill the gap? The way to fill the gap is by using some of the latest methodologies that we can get access to and combining them with proven methodologies that we've used in the past to help us create a uh, testing environment and a um, studying environment that helps us understand the extent and the scale of these query variations. We have uh, methodologies such as experience sampling, uh, we have access to eye trackers, we have crowdsourcing, and we can bring all of those techniques together to help us understand how differently people search and crucially, once we understand how differently they search, we can start to build testing environments that will enable us to understand the impact that these query variants have. Once we have those kinds of testing environments in place, we can start to think about the problem of building search engines that can cope with these different variants and indeed potentially even exploit them to ensure that we get better quality results for all of the users who search um, on a search engine. So we think this is an important problem. Query variation is extensive and it has a significant impact on the effectiveness of search engines. We think it's an important problem to study right now, partly because we think we have the methodologies to enable us to study this, but also because we increasingly are aware of the importance of ensuring that search works for everybody, not just the majority. And we also think it's a, a very important problem to study 
because we have seen some evidence, again, there are pointers in the paper that hint that there are um, bad actors out there who are deliberately trying to persuade people to search for particular documents in particular ways. And because they search and then find those documents that may have misinformation, people trust their search and they trust the information that they find. So we think this is a really important thing to look at. We think you need to use interdisciplinary researchers to come up with solutions for this, not just search engine people or um, information science people, but um, sociologists or psychologists will also be important. Thank you to my co-authors and also thank you to our supporters at the Australian Research Council. They provided a research fellowship for Damiana Spiner and uh, a number of us are members of the ARC Centre of Excellence on Automated Decision Making and Society. And as we always do when we are presenting work from RMIT, we also acknowledge the Woiwurrung and Boomerang language groups of the Eastern Kulin Nations on whose unceded land we carried out this research.